Welcome to the Crunch McDabble Show. Here is your host, the legendary Crunch McDabbles. Now, I'm not a big math guy. That needs to be another disclaimer right up front. If I'm wrong about this, I will take this video down right away. Basically, I've been trying to figure out what is going on with this percent change formula I see everyone talking about on the internet. Have you seen this? They will talk about increasing your damage from 60% of average damage to 70% of average damage, and they will say it's a difference of 10%. But actually, going from 60% to 70% is a 16.6% increase, which it is, but it isn't. But it is, but it isn't, right? So I've paced around quite a bit thinking about this. I've done a little bit of reading on it, but honestly, I haven't found anybody who is looking at this quite the same way I am. However, I feel pretty comfortable at least trying to explain how I'm seeing this, and I'd like to share it with you. If it is accurate or seems accurate, it will keep us all good and thinking about this the what hopefully is the right way. But if it's wrong, Listen, it's Gonzo. I'm fine with that. I've been wrong before. What we are talking about is a formula called percent increase or percent change. Here is the formula. There's really only two inputs to it, an original value and a new value. You find the difference between them, and then you divide by the original. Basically, it's an expression of change between two points in relation to the size of the original point. You see that? Does that make sense? So with the percentages of average damage, if we start at 60% and we move to 70%, that is a change of 10. Then we divide that 10 by the original value of 60 and we get 0.166. And then we multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage and we get 16.6%. Now, Percent change is absolutely a useful statistical tool in certain situations. You can use it just fine by itself, as you frequently see in advertising to show an increase. Let's say a box of Oreos used to have 60 Oreos in the box, but now it has 70 Oreos in the box. They will mark the bag with the big red tag that says 16.7% more Oreos. And people like me will walk by and purchase them because I like Oreos and I like the idea of having 16.7% more of them. Percent change is also used for comparisons. However, there seems to be situations where this is useful and situations where it can be misleading. The examples I see for percent change usually use it to compare changes over time. Here is a good example. Let's say a company had 60 employees, then over the course of the year they added 10 more employees, in that year, they would have had a 16.7% increase in employees. That makes sense. It's just like the Oreos example. Then, the next year, if they only added 10 more employees again, this time going from 70 to 80 employees, it would have only been an increase of 14.3% for that year. In this example, percent change makes sense because you would expect a larger company with 70 employees to increase more employees over the year than they did when they had 60 employees. So in this case, the percent change statistical tool is revealing that the company fell short of increasing employees at the same rate that they had the year before. Hence the difference in percent change of 16.7% for the first year and only 14.3% the next year. And that is beautiful. That is working perfectly. And you can see the reason that that works in this situation is because the point from which they started is relevant. This would be the number you divide it by. In this case, with the employees, the starting value of 60 or 70 is relevant to the final value because you expect a bigger amount of change with the bigger starting value. Do you see how that makes sense? Now, when an attack bonus increases by plus one, are you expecting to get more out of it depending on where you started? In other words, is a plus one bonus added to a plus nine to hit expected to yield more than a plus one bonus added to a plus 13 to hit? I don't really think so. 
A plus 1 is going to turn a plus 9 into plus 10, and a plus 1 is going to turn a plus 13 into a plus 14. The amount from where you started has no bearing on the amount where you end up. And I know that seems obvious when you say it like that. Of course, a plus 1 isn't going to be different in different scenarios. But that is actually what you're doing when you use percent increase. Since you divide the amount of change by the starting value, the result of the percent change formula adjusts based on where you started from as if it's anticipating a bigger result from a bigger starting point. As a result, as the attack bonus increases, the percent change will decrease because it's expecting a bigger return from a bigger starting point. This gives the illusion that it's adding less damage as the bonus goes up. But is that the reality of what happens? Let's take a look at an example scenario. Let's say I'm about to cast the Guidance Cantrip, and I'm going to give someone a plus one status bonus to their attack roll. But I don't know whether to cast it on the War Priest or the Fighter. They both deal 10 average weapon damage on a hit, but the Fighter has a beefy plus 14 to hit, and the War Priest only has a plus 10 to hit, and they are both trying to hit an enemy with a 20 armor class. Now, I want to make sure my Guidance Cantrip has the biggest impact possible, so I decide to compare percent increases. If I give the bonus to the War Priest, the plus 1 moves the War Priest from 60% to 70%, which is a percent increase of 16.6%. If I give the bonus to the Fighter, the plus 1 moves the Fighter from 110% to 120%. But going from 110 to 120 is only a 9.1% increase. So clearly, according to the percent increase analysis, giving the bonus to the War Priest is going to give me a higher increase in damage. But let's look at what happens. If I give a plus one bonus to the War Priest, he moves from 60% of average damage to 70% of average damage. Since he deals 10 damage on a hit, 70% of his 10 damage is 7 average damage. The fighter chips in his 120% of average damage, which is 120% of 10, which is 12 average damage. You add them together and you get 19 average damage from the two of them when I buff the War Priest. Now if I go the other way and I buff the fighter, I get the original 60% of average damage from the War Priest, which is 6 average damage, and the fighter moves from 120% of average damage up to 130% of average damage, which is going to be 13 average damage. And then add them together, and it totals 19 average damage again. It's the same average damage for either scenario. So why did the percent change results indicate there was a difference between the two options? It's because it considers the starting point of the fighter, and it's expecting a higher rate of change but the rate of change is 10% for all those plus one bonuses, regardless of where we start from. So when it doesn't get a higher rate of change, it gives us a lower percent change result. This means the percent change formula is not quite measuring what we think it's measuring. So what the heck just happened? Let me try and state this again so it makes sense. So I'm kind of repeating myself. Adding a plus one to either the War Priest or the Cleric was going to give them the same amount of extra damage because in both cases the plus one improved them 10% of average damage and they both dealt the same amount of weapon damage on a hit. The end result was going to be the same amount of extra damage either way. The percent change was lower for the fighter because the fighter had a higher starting percentage of 120%. So adding in a paltry 10% extra damage doesn't look as robust as adding the same 10% to the War Priest 60%. It's almost like percentage change is giving you a statistical impression of what the change seems like in relation to the starting point. But in this case, we don't really care what it seems like. We just want to compare what it actually is. In this case, it's the same. Both are an increase of 10%. So it was the same. Now, here is a simple example where it would be useful to use percent change. A fourth level barbarian deals 60 average damage on a hit. An ability gives them plus 10 damage. That is a 16.7% increase in damage from that ability. 
Then at 15th level, they deal 120 damage on their attack. That's huge. They get an ability that gives them plus 10 damage again. That is nice, but it's only a 9% increase, so it isn't as good an ability by comparison as the one they got at 4th level. So see how that works there? It's the same plus 10 damage in both cases. The difference is the 10 damage is less significant if you deal a whopping 120 damage on a hit compared to when you dealt 60 damage. So in this case, the percent change would give you a really useful way to compare the two different attacks at different levels. You can clearly say this one was a better ability because it gave you more bang for your buck. The long story short, be careful with percent change equations that are out there. Sometimes 10% really just is 10%. In any case, I hope this has been helpful. Survive Galarian with the math formula for percent change. Or just make sure you have more hit points than the bad guys at the end of the fight. How about that? Let's just let's just get that part done. Alright, bye. Mascara, who knows? It's truly the most wonderful time of the year. Merry Christmas, one and all. I just I want to Welcome to the Crunch McDabbles. Yeah, um, I'll take a um, Kung Pao chicken in an order of egg rolls and um, a wonton soup. Uh, yeah, could you have the delivery guy just uh, come up and shut my camera off when he gets here? No? Yeah, no. I still want it. Yeah, just leave it in the laundry. That's fine. All right, thank you. Bye.